Hey everybody, my name is Dan Demogorgas, and welcome to the Stanley Parable. I'm checking out the Ultra Deluxe Edition on PS5, and as you can tell, I got a very special guest, my dad, Dr. John Demartini. <laughs> Hi everyone. Yeah, we're we're going to explore a new game today, and as usual, I'm uh, new at it, so you're going to probably see that, so if you laugh, then that's understandable. Exactly. If uh, if you don't laugh, then that's probably something to do with you. <laughs> it's your issue. <laughs> your issue. Have you played but, the but, Stanley uh, Parable? I have not played this before, so, so I see videos. But we'll say no on that, right? That's fine. And 5:41 p.m. Wonder why time's important. Checking out the Stanley Parable for the first time. Obviously, I've seen YouTube videos, you know, back in the day when it first came out, but. Now it's on PS5, so let's check it out. The Ultra Deluxe. Begin the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley mm. was happy. Interesting. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh, it's okay, now I'm good. So he got off his desk and went out of the office. So that's my first choice. So okay, so you're going to be Stanley. So yeah, so we... So I will be Stanley at times, you'll be Stanley. Yeah, yeah, so right now I'm playing, and I'll hand it off to my dad, because the controls are simple. He's, he can do it. He's, he's mastered some games. We've played a few. He has so. confidence in me, obviously. <laughs> well, and yeah, all you can do is crouch. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So I can listen to the voice, or I can ignore the voice. Not as you sure. Obviously nobody there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm, okay. Just, just, just to start off. This, this is was right. not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. <laughs> Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, because I'll, I'll kind of flip-flop. I don't know. It depends on the decisions. So you didn't go down the left side. You went to the right side. Yeah, that's the... <clears throat> the whole objectivism, ah, determinism yes, thing. <laughs> truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, but eager to get back to business, Stanley <laughs> took the first oh. open door on his left. <laughs> or... Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> what? Do not 
jump on the crack of the park and I should build cars there. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Uh -oh. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Who's she? Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You what? need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. <laughs> I if don't you know can truly on. place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. This is definitely the kind of chick you want to find. <laughs> Should I answer it? I'll answer it. Could have just not answered it. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. You oh, son of a bitch. On. Got him. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? <laughs> Who'd want to commit their life Damn. to you? Damn! I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sure. This is a very sad story Honey, I'm about home. the death of a man <laughs> named Stanley. Good morning, employee 427 press. Triangle to control. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly <laughs> what he's told to do. Ah, see. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought <laughs> excited him terribly. <laughs> Let's circle this bit down with the boys. So this is definitely he went interesting. <laughs> he imagined that he came to two open like doors so and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It mm. barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy oh. world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. This isn't dinner, though. Down one path <laughs> lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Oh. He, said the, he said the title. He said the name of the game. Tell your kids a story. What it kids? Such a I don't have a life. <laughs> and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. <laughs> Tell your wife you love her. All right. But there is no answer. Oh. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. See? And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, There's an automaton. 
Stanley, mm. the next time the screen exactly. asks you to push a button, do not do it. <laughs> oh. Of course, he just said not to do it. So, of course, you're being instructed to not do it. So he's being told what to do by not doing it. So if he presses it, he's not following instructions and taking his choice. Seems like it won't progress without me pressing it. Yeah. <laughs> <You see? laughs> can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? To question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried- Did die? Did I just die? The end is never the end. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I guess I got the bad ending. <laughs> <clears throat> that was the Groundhog Day because you didn't follow that path. Yeah, the all original of his co-workers were gone. Groundhog what could it mean? Day. Stanley Groundhog decided day. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. That path you took led that direction. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, we'll listen, we'll listen. Or do you want to try? Now my dad's playing, so he's gonna he, let's see if he can figure it okay, out. Okay, we're in the we're in the office now. Yeah. Everyone is unique. <laughs> that that moves you, and this makes you look around. So you want to like use them at the same time to like okay, push yeah. forward and then round. <laughs> Gotta use both. <laughs> I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean... Okay. <laughs> you, you got this. You just gotta get used to it. Yeah, then... Yeah. There you go. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Mm. So you're gonna listen to him. Keep going up the stairs. <laughs> I walk sideways. This this is this is how he walks in real life. I <laughs> I don't know. Hey, however you want to play the game. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover in not the, an in indication of any human life. <laughs> Shocked, unraveled, hey, Stanley books. wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. You need to put in that code on the keypad. Two Stanley left. just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's behind you, directly behind you. And then look down. Do you see it? Oh, so I gotta go. Yeah, 2845. Hey, just press, uh, press the X button. Or the cross button, <laughs> I guess. Forgot. But it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got oh. the hell along with the story. Well, what did he do? <laughs> okay. It opened the door, but I don't see a door open. I guess look around. Maybe you'll see it. Oh, see it's right there. Oh, look at that. 
That's okay. that, that little secret compartment opened up. Oh. There you go. Are you getting it? Yeah, yeah. Think that door's it? Yeah. I guess you're going into the elevator. <laughs> I'm going to drop right into the elevator. It looks like it's, yeah, well. Yeah, I don't know by walking right into that. Looks like a, you think that's? I think that's the only Can you hit that? I think once you get closer, press that X button. There we go. There we go. I don't know where we're going, but. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. <laughs> it was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, you could have gone to the left and escaped. Oh, well. Mind Control. I guess, yeah, press that. The Turn lights around. rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What a horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Look around your environment. Ah, there it is. Press that button. <laughs> you, you, you getting it? I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. Remember, the left one moves, the other one looks around. Like now once you know the monitors where you're jumped at. to yeah, life. You got it. Their got true it. nature revealed. Each it bore the vibrated. number of an employee yep. in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so insane. many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Just a number. Well. I guess uh, keep on walking around. Let's continue on to the next one. Go there? Yeah, yeah. I guess press that button to your left. This mind control go. facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? In mind control, hmm. Getting out of here. No. Very interesting room, he though. He refused <laughs> to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It Never. was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? <laughs> like the narrator's voice. <laughs> but here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. <laughs> Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Which way do we go? Yeah, just keep go to the, the facility. See that facility? Head towards there. Yeah, keep, yeah, you can, multiple ways to get there. Oh. The little portal thing. Idle waiting input. 
And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to oh. everything it stood for. Yes, this is your choice. I'm going to turn off the mind control. Come on, there we go. And then, yes, there you go. Yes! He had won! He had you defeated won. the machine. You, uh, you won, Dad. I think. <laughs> from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. Or... And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How oh, had he been going. freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped <clears throat> through the open door. Oh, that's a cool transition. Just Stanley darkness. felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Beat the game? You beat the game, Dad? I guess we... <laughs> you beat it? Well, it has multiple endings, but... Trophy earned. You did it. So what... First what try. It... See? He's the, he, he beats the game first try. That's completely without logic. Who must have been predetermined? Ah, uh, hey, 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 Must have been hey, determined. Hey. I think my son determined that. Well, and organize done. that because I could barely use the controls, as you can see. <laughs> well, I guess. Uh, I, where do we start again? You just All keep of going. his co-workers were gone. What yep. could it mean? Groundhog Stanley Day. Stanley decided Groundhog to go to the meeting Day. room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So I, I beat I, the game without even knowing how. Yeah. <laughs> well, you beat. See, that's the thing. This has multiple. I lots get, of endings. Yeah, multiple angles. Yeah. So that was determinism was defeated. Yes, essentially. So that meant that, that the individual had freed will. Yeah. And he set himself up and liberated himself from the bondage of outside circumstances running his life. Yeah. So well, well said. <laughs> I always say that our perceptions, decisions, and actions are what we have governance over. Not what happens around us, but our perceptions, decisions, and, ha and actions as a result of that. And we can choose to respond different ways based on the associations we've made. I like that. <laughs> well said. Of course, some believe that no matter what those associations we make, they were externally driven. So therefore, back into determinism, that's... Yeah. I have a, a philosopher from Yale that I debate with on the ship sometimes that he's purely deterministic, and then I catch him in paradoxes. Ah. Uh. And... and uh, he doesn't have to say, I'll have to get back with you on that one. Yes, <laughs> you got me. I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I, I kind of knew it, not Stanley listening to him would cause some kind of a bad ending, doors. so that's why I wanted to kind of do left. it. So I wonder... <laughs> now, it says he went to the left. Yeah. So if you went to the right... Yeah, but that guy, I, it started... Yeah. I want to keep... I want to go to the right again. Yeah. This was not the correct way time, to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to yeah. admire it. Oh, now Yet I'm here. Yet there was not a single person here either. Ah. Feeling a wave of disbelief, I, I Stanley went decided path. to go yeah. up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passive-aggressively on other co-workers. Resent co-workers for not supporting you more. <laughs> it's, it's good advice, right, Dad? That's the typical response of... The average amygdala run be individual. What's that? <laughs> Everyone is unique. You most of all. Interesting. 
Interesting. Synergize, core value, expenditures, shift global market, monetize, free to play. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay, Coming so he went up. Staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Let's go down. See if we get different endings. You've got it down how to go down those stairs. Uh, I probably banged myself on the stairs over and over again. What's this? I can't read that. Yes. Yeah, it's it's like a letter I sent to my girlfriend about 60 years ago. <laughs> But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, uh, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. PT, no. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close <laughs> automatically behind feet. him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply yeah. repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, the same. he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. It's looping. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still loose. I feel like I'm going crazy. So he imagined himself <laughs> flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh God, I'm flying. <laughs> then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my <laughs> thoughts, he thought. Uh, and when he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take oh, yeah, responsibility for himself? <laughs> Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How For else real. would the voice the explain all that? This voice was karma a part wheel. of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Uh, 
I think my path to, to gave it a little bit more freedom. What do you think? Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Fuck. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, <laughs> and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And Damn. she had soon turned to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. <laughs> and in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Mm -hmm. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. And that was the man and that she remembered done. the yeah. meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. I don't know how you're going along and dealing with it, watching us, but <laughs> we're, we're uh, exploring and learning as we go. I'm learning how to just do the controls, first of all. Oh, he's not saying anything. Whatever happened with the chick? <laughs> See, now you're invested. Now you're invested. Well, I, I want to know what happened to the girl. I don't, now, now there's not a Seems voice like in my just head. Get, he died, and then the girl there was, that just didn't go anywhere. Well, maybe we can find out. There's, you're noticing no one's talking to me, right? <laughs> when Stanley what I want to do is pick, oh, pick up the girl and then go to the field. He entered the door on his <laughs> there you left. go. I want to see what's up with that escape. I want to see if I, if I can put in the code quick enough. Does it... Oh. What's this option? Hold up. Executive bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> because the boss knows what the boss says goes, if the boss suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. What? Okay. Whoa. What? The big bathroom. Extreme bathrooms. <laughs> Extreme bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and Time Magazine, but they can't put time, so. Okay. An option too. Oh, well, see, look at all these options. What? I see an elevator. Don't shoot the panda. Blind. Business strategy. <laughs> Can we go up? We've gone down enough. We we know what's down. The mind control. Let's go. Shit. Fuck it. If I die, I die. <laughs> oh yeah. Elevator music. A music elevator and a giant extreme bathroom. <laughs> well, they're probably giving you an enjoyable moment before you die. Well, elevators. Bad things can happen in elevators. And the controller's going crazy. Maybe this never ends, it just keeps going up. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't, no. <laughs> no. I just can't. The an infinite, music. An infinite elevator. Ah! Elevator, <laughs> elevator music. No. This is hell. Get me out of here. Oh. Oh. I'm. That's your... What? I'm still. Did I do that wrong? This is. Just, oh, this is the same place I ended up. But this, this is where I just was. Tracks, not a living soul. What was it? Anywhere. Two eight five three. Could what he really it? be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Oh, too much it. for any man to take. He fell to his knees, bursting into half moans, half sobs. <sighs> the guttural retching of life from a man denied any hope, any reason to keep going. Here on the floor, he lay prone. Paralyzed what? by fear for nearly a full hour. 
But when at last he began to different. move about and survey the situation, he found a keypad behind the boss's desk. What That's could different. it mean? Was it a sign of hope for Stanley's future? Alas, it was not. For although this keypad guarded the terrible secret of Stanley's past, it had been assigned a four-digit code so devious and so random that no man could ever hope to guess it. Mm. Two, eight, four, five. <laughs> Statistically, nearly impossible to guess blind. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code oh. by sheer luck. Amazing. Okay, so just still he stepped in the red mind control facility. Okay. There's, the, there's the dead path. Let's Although find out how you passage die. Had the word <laughs> Sounds good. On it. The truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> Let's go. The Let's door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nah. At this point, I Stanley was death. making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward <laughs> and willingly confront his death. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. <laughs> but Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real okay. story. Trapped it's about to be smashed. Yeah. vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned <laughs> and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. GG. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. What the hell? <laughs> Who are you? The Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? What? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? <laughs> what is going on? Awesome. Button sounds. Oh, this is like breaking the fourth wall. This is, oh, I beat it. I beat the game. I did it. I get credits, kinda. A little solitaire. There's two ways to go. There's a lot of... Oh, this is probably just like showing me all the different stuff. Narration outtakes. <laughs> the boss's office. Yeah, it's just kind of like showing concept art. Interesting. We designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The, the action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting a build in that it was too far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. <laughs> so, like Call of Duty Warzone, fighting aliens, I guess. I don't know. This is definitely a creative mind on this game. Alien base. Yeah, very, very unique game. Very unique. 
Oh, option one. So these are the blueprints. Obey, disobey. Go to the staircase, go to the lounge. There's the exit. <laughs> Stanley Parable. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can oh, stop nope. the program before they both fail. Ah, uh, well. Turn off your PlayStation. There's no other what? way to beat this game. Turn off your so PlayStation. You forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... <laughs> <laughs> well. I uh, guess that's a violent death. Uh, well, the principle of the game apparently is you got some options in life, and even when you think that it's pure de predetermined, the options you take can make a difference in the outcome. And if you choose an outcome to be an automaton following the collective herd response, you'll probably not exist or make any meaningful existence. But if you choose to go a path that gives you an autom out of a, the automaton path, but gives you individuality, you might make a difference. And you might end up in a road or a walking path where there's sunshine. But that's the, that's the journey we've been on. So we, uh, <laughs> we learned as we went. Yeah. And we and both had yeah. life and death in the process. <laughs> It's all heaven and hell, and I guess I guess that's the the thing. No matter what we do, there's always a conservation of both of those. Hmm. Our well, death is our life. Our life is our death. As Milton said, you can make a heaven out of a hell or a hell out of a heaven. Yes, sir. So our choices are real, but so is predetermined or determinism. Could be real if we choose to. Well, so sir. may you enjoy the game and until our next adventure. I'm leave it off here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Let me know if you've ever played the Stanley Parable or the, especially the Ultra Deluxe Edition, what kind of endings you got. The Playful Philosopher quote of the day is, man is not fully conditioned and determined, but rather determines himself whether he gives in to conditions or stands up to them. In other words, man is ultimately self-determining. Man does not simply exist, but always decides what his existence will become, what he will become in the next moment. Victor Frankl. And thought that was relevant because of the whole determinism, choices, objectivism. And v Victor Frankl in the concentration camps, because he had a search for meaning and extracted meaning out of his existence, more than the rest of the people in the concentration camps, he survived. They chose to be at the fate, you might say, of the deterministic path that, oh my God, this doesn't match my fantasy, so this is, this is overwhelming and they died. He turned whatever happened into an opportunity and used his mind in capacities that the average person didn't and survived. Went on to create a logo therapy, which has helped bring meaning to millions of people today. So, the game has meaning and may your life also have great meaning yes sir and obviously i'm going to leave a link to my dad's youtube channel if you want to check out his videos he streams all the time and lots of videos if you want to explain kind of what you what you do oh i'm, I'm just a, a blabbermouth i go around doing talks all the time and um for some reason they let me on youtube with some of those and um I uh, have a few people that are curious about it enough to, to watch them. So if there's, if you have a need for just being curious, then check them out. I highly recommend it. Awesome stuff. I'll leave a playlist on screen right now to our other videos we've done for 
Numa, Breath of Life, and also a playlist to Absu, and uh, also a playlist to Journey. Just all three of them. Yeah. Check them out if you want to see see more videos of me playing with my dad and him playing games and understanding the, the philosophical meaning behind them. And I appreciate you being here, Dad. It was, Thank you. It means a lot to it's gaming fun. with my dad. We get to play some games <laughs> together. It's good. We had a good time. If you liked the video, consider subscribing. Share it with a friend. Hit that notification bell. You know, say what's up. And I will see you all in the next video. Later. <laughs>